If what you're about to watch does not remind you of the ancient king of Babylon, I have no idea what will. All right, folks, let's get into this one. I know that we've been talking a lot about the presidential debate, and quite frankly, I do think it was one of the worst days in American history for a lot of reasons, and we'll probably talk a little bit more about this in a minute. Of course, I would encourage you to watch the video that I just recently made talking about this and the significance of why it was such a terrible day for us, but when you watch the video that you're going to watch right now, I want you to just stop for one moment and reflect upon the significance of what you're actually watching. Now, I have to say this because when you see this, there's no way in the world you cannot stop and reflect upon the story of King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. And here's the reason why I say that, because we know that there was a direct correlation between the fall of a person's mind and heart and what they choose to do with respect to obedience to God. And when people choose to rebel against the true and living God, you've got it. Sin absolutely makes you stupid. And undoubtedly, there is no exception to this rule when it comes to world leaders. As a matter of fact, let me venture to say that when a world leader chooses to go down down a road that is displeasing to God, it always leads to destruction, especially when pride is involved. And I have to say this because it's another issue that I've been talking about as of recent. I have never seen a presidential administration put so much pride on display. And when I talk about pride on display, I am talking about the Biden regime who continues to put literally up for everybody to see the disgusting and evil, wicked practices of a small group in the nation who choose to embrace sin and glorify it and make it look so good. I don't ever remember the White House in any recent time talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ or talking about the birth of Christ or speaking about anything that's anything of any significance at all concerning the resurrection or concerning subjects that are very important to believers. But yet, when it comes to secular humanistic philosophy, when it comes to uh, the gay pride agenda, when it comes to wickedness, they put everything on full blast. You're having all kinds of uh, men that are showing up to the White House dressed as women with full facial hair. You have people pretending to be pregnant when it's biologically impossible for them to be able to do it, and the White House glorifying that type of behavior. You have the White House penalizing people for actually trying to save the lives of babies and praying and seeking the true and living God while at the same time rewarding people who curse the name of the true and living God. And this has all been done because of a family that currently sits in the White House who only wants to serve themselves and make themselves better just in their own mind and in their own book. And the reality of it is they continue to pursue wickedness, unrighteousness, evil, and they do not make God any part of that equation. And it's sad to see how quickly the degradation of our nation has gone. And so it's really interesting because I want to put up a little video. It's a montage. Breitbart put it up. Of course, they took it from the CNN uh, televised debate of the president. And I want you just to see what this man has become. And once you see what this man has become, then I want to read something out of the book of Daniel to you that might actually shed some light on what's going on and what's happening. So let's get into this. It's pretty important. It's a vivid, ugly picture. It's heartbreaking. And of course, it puts the United States of America in the worst possible light it can be in for a lot of reasons. But let's watch this. Here we go. I want Mr. Trump left me. We created 15,000 new jobs. <coughs> and, you know, <coughs> we have a thousand trillionaires in America. I mean, billionaires in America. The, 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 the total initiative. The only terrorist who's done anything across the border is one who came along and killed three, and his administration killed an Al Qaeda person coming in and his administration. I was recently in 
in in uh, France kill or cause brain damage. This guy told Ukraine, told Trump, do you think he'll stop when he if he if he takes Ukraine? What do you think of Be Belarus? United Nations Security Security Council. We are the biggest pr pr producer. No president in our history has spoken like that before. <laughs> but I do I do know he has a real problem. We saw people occupying that. We find him finding finding housing. These corporate. These corporate operations that collude the impact of on the the choice. You okay, b before we go on with this, is this as painful to you as it is to me? Like, I don't want to see this man be in office another day, but it's still extraordinarily painful to watch. Like, this actually hurts watching. But I got just over another minute of it for you. Here we go. Increase economic growth, doctor, and any, anything having to do with volunteerism. We were the only ones of consequence. So no one after, uh, I would not raise the cost of Social Security. It's, uh, I, he, he just doesn't know what he's talking about. Ever elected that to, 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 to build these chips. I never heard a president talk like this before. And our, and our, op, and our, you can see he is six foot five and only 223 pounds, or 235 pounds. You get rid of the ability of Medicare to, uh, the, for the ability that reduced the federal debt, the debt all, all the longer is happening now. Well, every pharmaceutical company cannot have to pay. Thank you. And by the way, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person uh, uh, eligible for what I've been able to do with the, uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with Everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. I just, if you're an American, you can't help but to just be devastated by watching that. I, I, look, I get the fact that I have hated every single minute that this president has been in office because he has stood for nothing but wickedness. He is a proud, arrogant man who chooses to wave his fist in the face of the true and living God. He hates righteousness. He hates anything that represents anything that would be remotely godly. He has been literally waving his fist in the face of God from the very beginning of this, but it is sad. It is sad to see this, and quite frankly, it's a very, very dangerous day for the United States of America because Iran is watching us. Turkey is watching us. North Korea is watching us. China is watching us. I mean, look around. The whole world is watching us, and they're basically saying, I've got a hundred and some odd days to do whatever it is I need to do to put myself in the most advantageous position. Folks, this is terrible. This is terrible. But I have to read something from Daniel chapter 4. Tell me if this sounds familiar to you because, folks, this is such an important parallel that I need you to see. And then the video I'm going to show you after this hopefully will shed even more light on this. But watch this, guys. The story that we read here in Daniel chapter 4 is predicated upon a very uh, disturbing dream that Nebuchadnezzar has. Now, this is not the first time this has happened with Nebuchadnezzar. As a matter of fact, the first time we see an exposure to this would be in chapter two of Daniel. So Nebuchadnezzar has this other dream. It's very disturbing. He has it in chapter four. He knows to go to Daniel. Actually, you'll see the term Belshazzar used here uh, in Daniel chapter four because that's the name that they gave Daniel. That's the, the Babylonian name that they gave Daniel. Oftentimes, the Bible refers to him as as Daniel more than it does Belshazzar, but in this particular context, there is sort of an interchanging between the two names. And he goes to Daniel because he has a very, very disturbing dream. The dream really bothers him. And so he goes to Daniel and he says, uh, Daniel, I need an interpretation of this dream. So this is where we leave off in verse 19 as Daniel is getting ready to interpret the dream. Watch this. It says, then Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, that's the name that was given to him, by the way, was a stone for one hour and his thoughts troubled him. So remember, he's watching this and for an hour, he's just completely shocked. Like he's like, what in the world is this? He, he uh, thinks about this dream. He's astonished by it. It's blowing his mind. It's very disturbing to him. 
Look at what it goes on to say in verse 19. It says, The king spoke and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. In other words, it's not going to be a good outcome for you. So he doesn't want to share this because I think Daniel, first of all, loves Nebuchadnezzar. He's serving Nebuchadnezzar. He cares about Nebuchadnezzar. He wants to do well for Nebuchadnezzar. But knowing what this dream is about, it's very disturbing to Daniel. So Daniel, of course, is going to go on to tell him uh, what the dream is actually about. Look at this verse 20. It says, the tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto heaven and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the field and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. Which, by the way, the reason why I did not read the beginning of uh, chapter four is because as Daniel interprets a dream, he's simply reiterating the dream. So this is all part of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Verse 22, look what it goes on to say. He says, it is thou, O king. In other words, king, you are the tree in this dream. That's what he's saying. He's saying, it is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto heaven and thy dominion to the end of the earth. In other words, God has made you great, and this is you. you you've really expanded. You've grown. And whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven times pass him over. Again, uh, seven times, we've seen the term times being used before. We're talking about seven years here, but look at this. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the King, that they shall drive thee from men, and dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of man, and giveth it to whom Ever he will. In other words, King, uh, you're going to be made to be crazy. For seven years, you're going to lose your mind. It says, And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee that thou shalt uh, have known that the heavens do rule. So in this case, there's going to be mercy given to uh, King Nebuchadnezzar in that Nebuchadnezzar is not going to lose his kingdom while he's going crazy for seven years, uh, in essence, to understand the fact that this was all God that orchestrated this, right? So this is pretty heavy, but look at what Daniel says in light of all of this. This is very, very important, okay? He says this in verse 27, he says, Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. So this is what Daniel is saying. This is the advice he's given to the king. He says, look, whatever you do in light of what we know is coming, break yourself off from sin. Walk away from sin by living righteously. Live a righteous life and break away from sinful activity. You can do that by living a righteous life. That's what he says. And he says, break off your iniquities. In other words, walk away from your iniquities by going to the poor and showing them mercy. In other words, it is going to be an act of you humbling yourself, going to people that have not achieved the greatness that you have and having mercy on them. Be mindful. Walk away from arrogance and pride. Why? He says, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. He says, you need to do this. Verse 28, it says, all this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. And look what it goes on to say in verse 29. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon and the king spake and said, is not the great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Watch this folks, verse 31. And while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. Oh my goodness, while he was walking in his pride and arrogance and acting like he's the most high God and, 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 and imitating Satan, in essence, look at what God does. God literally takes it away from him. 
And look what it goes on to say, folks. Watch this. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did not eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hairs were grown like eagles, feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. And he went nuts. And he went nuts. You want to know why? Because he gave himself to wickedness. Folks, let me just explain something to you. This is how the devil works. The devil will go out of his way to take blessings away from you by causing you to be proud over that which God has bestowed to you. If you don't even look at this from the example of what you see in a world leader and only apply it to world leaders, bring it home to yourself. Recognize all the wonderful things that God has done for you. And I beg you to be a person who walks in humility. Otherwise, you're going to end up like Nebuchadnezzar and undoubtedly like Joe Biden. The Bible says here that Nebuchadnezzar was separated from all the men. You know, the enemy loves to do this. The enemy will use you, and once he uses you, he'll throw you away. And he will inspire other people to throw you away. I want to show you another video. And when you see this video, it shouldn't shock you. It should basically show you a pattern that we see in the Bible. And just like Nebuchadnezzar was separated from men, watch how the president of the United States at this point is now separated from all of his people in the Democratic Party. Within a half hour of the time that the debate finished, look at the things that all the talking heads were saying. These are all Democrats. This is the media wing of the Democratic Party. Think of Nebuchadnezzar being taken away from the presence of men and understand how Joe Biden right now is literally being ripped away in his craziness from the presence of the people around him. Watch this because there's a bigger application than the one for our country. Much bigger application. But watch this. Right now as we speak, there is a deep, a wide, and a very aggressive panic in the Democratic Party. The panic that I am hearing from Democrats is not like anything that I have heard in this campaign so far. I think there was a, a sense of shock, actually, at how he came out at the beginning of this debate, uh, how uh, his voice sounded about, you know, he seemed a little disoriented. By the way, just so that you know, this is Axelrod speaking here. This is the guy who pretty much invented Obama. This is, the, this is a guy who is a, a, a literal genius in the Democratic Party. He's the, he's the line holder. And many of the people that are going to be talking here are people that literally are supposed to hold the line. They are part of the propagandist wing of the Democratic Party, and they are all running away from Joe Biden. Just like Nebuchadnezzar was separated from man for seven years, that's what's happening here. I'm serious. Look at the spiritualism here. Look at the parallels that exist, because there's a personal application that's so critically important for us. Watch this. There is a, a real concern here tonight that there's been some real damage done that cannot be undone. It involves party strategists. It involves elected officials. It involves fundraisers. And they're having conversations about the president's performance, which they think was dismal, which they think will hurt other people down the party in the ticket. And they're having conversations about what they should do about it. The guy that you just heard speaking right now, just so that you know, he is like the main guy. He is the figurehead in essence of all of the media world that represent the Democratic Party. And he is, in essence, green lighting, ripping Biden, basically. He was definitely given the green light himself. But think about the pattern. There's a spiritual pattern here. We could stop and we could do all the analysis and say, oh, yeah, they've been planning this for a long time, whatever, yada, yada, yada. You could do all that. But there's a bigger spiritual application that I need us to grasp. It is really important that you grasp this. Let's go on. Some of those conversations include, should we go to the White House and ask the president to step aside? There are going to be discussions about whether he should continue. Biden's answers were, in a lot of cases, not coherent. If anybody in America thinks that that was even close to being a, a, an OK debate by Joe Biden, I'm living in a parallel universe. That was an unmitigated disaster for President Biden from the second he walked out to the closing statement. It was a really disappointing debate performance from Joe Biden. I don't think there's any way, any other way to slice it. If he's on the ticket, I don't know how it's going to work. There is no two ways about it. That was not a good debate for Joe Biden. Um, that was painful. 
Uh, I love Joe Biden. I work for Joe Biden. Um, he didn't do well at all. Uh, he, he did not do well at all. I think Joe Biden lost in the first three minutes. I think a lot of voters probably tuned out and millions of people are having conversations with their families, with their friends, of if the president is up to the task and if he should step aside. I think there's a lot of people who are going to want to see him consider um, taking a different course now. Uh, we're still far from our convention. And there is time for this party to figure out a different way forward if he will allow us to do that. If, based on that, in 18 weeks, Donald Trump will be the president-elect. That was uh, not what we needed from Joe Biden, and it's personally painful for a lot of people. It's not just panic, it's pain. You guys get it? Look, you have to... I. If there's anything that I want to do with people as I teach people the Bible and continue to show them biblical principles and spiritual issues that are given to us through the scriptures, it's to understand the commonalities so that you can see the spiritual forces at work in the situation. You see, this is what happens when you become proud and you become arrogant and you believe the lies of the enemy and you believe yourself to be greater than anybody else because of the position that you've been put in. Remember, God definitely put Joe Biden in that position. He allowed Joe Biden to be in that position. I believe he did that to judge the nation. Just like Nebuchadnezzar was put in the position that he was in to judge uh, Israel, to judge the southern kingdom of Judah. I truly believe that God put Biden in this position to judge America because of the embrace racing of unrighteousness. Look, he was put there, but the problem is this, his heart and his mind was completely gone. He gave himself to the pride and the arrogance and the foolishness, and I do not see it as a coincidence that during Pride Month, God literally allowed President Biden to virtually do the same thing that we see happening here with Nebuchadnezzar, literally losing his mind. Now he's not probably crawling on the floor and eating grass and, you know, growing these long nails and, you know, doing this Howard Hughes thing. But the reality of it is he has lost his mind. He is nothing like he was because there is a spiritual precedent that is applied here. And there is something that I need you guys to pick up on. It's so critical. And that's this, please, please, please shun sin in your life by walking in righteousness. Please walk away from iniquity by walking in humility. I would beg you to understand the spiritual principle that's involved here. The reason why the United States of America right now is being judged is because of the embracing that we have had of unrighteousness in this nation. But the reality is this, and it's really critical to understand, the lesson that we gain the powerful lesson that we gain is so much more significant than even understanding the story. Why? Because if we can learn to humble ourselves in the eyes of the Lord and, and, and seek out the truth, look to him, there is hope. We can always be the beginning of restoration if we choose to say, God, I'm going to listen to you. There's where the hope is. And so it's time for us to not only walk in humility, but to encourage others to walk in humility. This is the time to be telling people about these things. Show them this passage. Show them the video of Joe Biden and show them the passage of Nebuchadnezzar. Tell them, does this remind you of anything? Look at the, at the parallels here. Look at the spiritual principle involved. Because when we walk in humility, God does what? He honors those. He honors those who choose to humble themselves. And this is something we all must do. If there is hope for our nation, if there is hope for our families, if there's hope for our security, if there's hope for the world in which we live, this is the only way to go about doing it. And we have to do it. It's plain and simple. Folks, there is hope. And that hope is founded in humbling ourselves before the God of heaven. It's that simple. And folks, the future looks bright if you're willing to put your faith and trust in God. God bless you.